Welcome to episode 57 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. I'm in an abusive relationship. It has gone on for years now. It has shifted everything about me and has become a slimy layer that covers every single aspect of my life. I knew it was abusive going in. I saw all the signs. I've known enough abusive people in my past to be able to pick up on the subtle and not so subtle words and deeds that were the dead giveaways. It starts with someone speaking and acting in a way that dehumanizes you. They make you feel that they are the person on the planet who can determine your value. They use their words to cut and scar. But abusive people are not people who you can always detect at first glance as abusive people. They have some charm. They disarm you with humor. They accuse others for being too sensitive about what they said because it was meant in jest, but it never really is. Many are taken in by the abusers. Some of the most abusive are also the most popular. It's all an act. The abuser always controls the narrative. Their words rise above all others. Once they get their hooks into you, their concerns replace your own. Their agenda becomes the series of hoops that you must jump through. Before you know it, your every thought will include an added layer of worrying about what they will think or do in reaction. Enough time goes by and you are no longer even in touch with what you think or want. It all becomes about the abuser and how you will deal with what they do next. Years back, when I first got the gut feelings that I was looking at an abuser, it brought up for me every form of abuse I have endured in my life. It dug up old wounds. It dragged me back into dark, dangerous caves that I thought I had left in the past. It was depressing, anxiety producing. And the thing that helped me keep it together was the thought that it would soon be over. It would be over. I would no longer have to hear the abuser's voice and as a reward for the reprocessing of the past, I would be able to celebrate the election of the first woman president. But I did not get my wish. The abuser took control and here we all are years later in an abusive relationship that seems to never end. One of the classic signs that you are in an abusive relationship is that your abuser will isolate you from those you love. Check. This abuser is isolating us. Now we have to be afraid that others may have the COVID-19 virus or that they may have the mind virus that he has infected many with. Isolating us empowers him. The abuser uses the time-honored refrain of, I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. He becomes the ever-present layer over everything. We aren't allowed to even stop thinking of him and what he might do next. You have entered a new world where the rules are different and wholly unpredictable. This state of imbalance keeps you drawn in. You have little time to think about what is best for you. That is no longer on the table. I spend my days feeling agitated and with an underlying apprehension about what is to come next. This is the headspace where abusers like to keep you. It's the space where you think of them and them alone. 
Abusers don't care whether you are thinking good thoughts or terrible thoughts about them. They just need you to be thinking of them all the time. I find myself waking in the middle of the night, most every night, filled with a sense of dread. That dread comes from what he has already done and the very real suspicion that he might have done some new horrible thing since I laid my head on the pillow. Many nights I'm right. Then I lay in bed, writing draft letters to my complicit senators, and try to figure out how to navigate the newest problem. The hours where I don't have to consider the current hellscape become shorter, though I need them more desperately. Don't get me wrong, I am not being abused anywhere near as much as the next person. The bounty he has put on my head is smaller than it is for others, but it is debilitating nonetheless. I'm lucky in that he hasn't torn my family apart or been responsible for the death of anyone I love yet. He hasn't come for me yet, but he has promised to do so if he gets four more years. Those who have the capacity to care about what happens to people other than themselves are absorbing all these attacks. Those with empathy suffer as those who are void of it continue their rampage. He is pulling all the strings. Do you want to stay healthy? He decides if you can or cannot get medical treatment. As evidenced by his court cases, he would prefer that you not have health insurance. Of course, he is afforded the health care options that none of us will receive. Are you struggling through the pandemic and job losses? The job losses are record-breaking, but he gets to decide who gets help. While many at the top get millions, you are to be happy for the $1,200 check sent out many months ago. Since we have been at this for about seven months, he thinks that you should be able to get by on less than $200 a month. It's all up to him and his cronies. Your struggles don't affect them in the least. Is your state on fire or suffering from a natural disaster? He may or may not help you, depending on whether your state voted for him or not. If they didn't, he will go out of his way to make your disaster more disastrous. He must punish you. You have a beef with any of this? He has already assembled his posse of low-level people who would be more than happy to kill you in his honor. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but you are in an abusive relationship too. Here are some of the indications that you are in an abusive relationship. You are subject to intimidation. Your concerns are minimized, denied, and blamed on others. There's economic abuse, where the ability to meet your needs is in the abuser's control. You are subject to coercion and threats. You find your life is in a state of chaos that you cannot extract yourself from. You keep trying to find the peace, the calm, but you are not in the driver's seat. Abusers make big promises. We've been told that we'll get new, better, cheaper health care. It's always two weeks away, and that has been promised for years now. We're going to rebuild our infrastructure. Hasn't happened. We are supposed to get 25 million new jobs. Nope. Remember the child care plan and family leave? I didn't think so. Remember the testing sites that were going to pop up in the parking lots of every Target, Walmart, Walgreens, and CVS? Haven't seen a one. Remember insulin that was as cheap as water? 
Ask anyone you know whose life depends on it. When you ask an abuser why everything is so bad, they will tell you it's all great. And there are even greater things right around the corner. Just wait a couple of weeks. To a low-level person, the feelings of power and self-importance happen at the point the promise is made. It does not come from doing the work and actually delivering what was promised. To a low-level person, the thrill, the good feelings, are what they are seeking. Once they've had that special hit, they're out. Actually doing the work is for losers and suckers. If you point out that they didn't deliver anything promised, they just make more promises and expect you to be fine with that. Abusers must obtain and maintain power and control over you. It's not because they're powerful people who are in control of themselves. It is exactly the opposite. They are small and weak and ashamed of how powerless they are. What they do not naturally possess on their own must be taken from you. They are weak and insecure people who live to prey on others. The most dangerous time with abusers is the time when they figure out that you are deciding to leave them. For you to leave is to strip them back down to the pathetic person they are on their own. For that reason, they will do anything, and I mean anything, to reclaim their power and control over you. That is where we find ourselves right now. One of the things that keeps people in the cycle is that they remember the times when the abuser was charming, or at least not scary and destructive. The recipients of the abuse are conditioned to work in an endless loop of trying to return to when the abuser was sweet and maybe even vulnerable. The trick is you are supposed to think that you are seeing the true soul of the person, you know, that part that others cannot see, and that if you just made everything go as they wish, they would be that way all the time. That's a lie. Then there's the Stockholm Syndrome, where the recipient of the abuse bonds to the abuser and decides that they share a common vision. The need for human connection and acceptance overrides all logical thought and sense of self-protection. Our abuser is held in place by the slavish devotion of people he would not spit on if they were on fire. They disgust him, as he is said to those who work closely with him. He makes fun of them, yet they are willing to die for him. It would be heartbreaking, except that these people cheer him on as he destroys our country and causes unnecessary death and mayhem. Even the media treats this situation like they are in an abusive relationship with him. The headlines are often not about what happened. Instead, the headline references how he reacted to what happened, as if that is the biggest issue. It's sad and scary to see them cowering like so many others. He is systematically destroying or hobbling all the institutions that were meant to save us from someone exactly like him. Let's talk about the lies. He has told us over 25,000 verifiable lies. His lies are often in direct opposition to another lie he told. But two things are happening here. First, lies strip us all of our shared reality. We can only share a reality if we can agree on some verifiable truths. 
we connect to one another through a shared sense of reality. We currently have no idea what reality is. We have no way of knowing what the truth is. We would be foolish to believe anything that someone who has lied over 25,000 times says. And there can be no stability in the absence of truth. My policy on lying is that I just don't think anyone who lies habitually is worth the work of trying to sort out their true statements from their lies. It's just entirely too much work. If I notice that someone has lied to me on multiple occasions, I will just stop believing everything they say. I don't have the time to do the digging and sorting. And nothing they say to me will hold any real value because it held no real value to them. If we are unable to require the truth of people, we will not be able to share a reality. And that means more isolation for all of us. The machine gun style of lying has left us all reeling and off balance. It has detached us from reality and one another. People in abusive relationships soon forget what it was like before their brain and central nervous system were co-opted by the abuser. We need to be very clear about the people who have forged bonds with the abuser. Their acceptance of these beliefs and this trajectory is a very strong indication that they are equally dangerous. If you are feeling abused by a relationship that someone else is trying to convince you is perfectly fine, you may have some serious relationship assessment to do. This is not okay. Not on any level. Those who seem to be immune to evil are also evil. Align yourself accordingly. Birds of a feather flock together. Those who wear their lack of concern for a virus that has infected seven and a half million people and killed over 210,000 people, the ones who wear that like a badge of honor, are to be feared. That is no badge of courage. It is evil. It is pathological. To have been infected with the virus and then refuse to tell the people you serve how long you've had it so that they may figure out if they have been exposed and exposed others is pathological. It is unconscionable. When the day comes that we are rid of the abuser, we will all have differing levels of post-traumatic stress disorders. This is not a feeling we will shake the minute he leaves the building. He has created so much chaos and hatred that we will not be able to draw a calm breath for some time to come. We have had a shared experience that painfully reactivates any and all trauma we have suffered in the past, but it can also serve as a model for those who have not. If you haven't had abuse in your past, you now know some of the feelings you will experience if you are ever in an abusive relationship, you will be able to recognize that pit in your stomach, the fog in your brain, the sense of dread and hopelessness. You will recognize the feeling that you are standing on shifting sand and you just can't seem to find solid footing. I always try to find the lesson that every situation contains always try to find how we can use this in a positive fashion moving forward. Hopefully, this will be an inoculation. Hopefully, the memories of these feelings will keep us from ever choosing another person of his low level or choosing to be in a relationship with anyone who activates those same feelings. If anyone makes you feel this same way, powerless and abused, run in the opposite direction. We are here for much greater things. We cannot fix 
the unfixable, we can only disengage. May we all be able to keep ourselves safe and do the work of bringing this nightmare to an end. Thanks for listening to Rebirth Revolution. Please tell others about us and that we can be found everywhere you get podcasts and on YouTube. We are here for you. Email any questions or ideas you have to rebirthrev at gmail.com. Until next week, lay low to the degree that you can. Create safe times in your day when the abuser can't reach you. Write down your feelings, the ones this brings up for you, and wear your mask. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and safe and come back next week. Thank you.